All right, so those terrible and overpriced Thor 11 Thunder figures were not the best first impression for Hasbro's plastic-free packaging strategy. But the first plastic-free packaging Marvel Legends figures have to be better, right? We'll find out on this episode of Geek Dad Life. Hello everybody and welcome to Geek Dad Life. It's your host, Jay Gladfelter here. Hasbro's move to reduce their plastic packaging to zero by the end of 2022 has frustrated toy collectors, especially the mint on card collectors, because now there's no way to see the figure inside the package. Now, I do believe that reducing plastic waste is a good thing for our planet and for us as humans that live on this planet. But I'll also admit that my experience with those Thor Love and Thunder figures was less than ideal. The figures didn't match the artwork that was on the outside of the box, and the figures themselves were just terrible. They didn't even come close to looking as good as, you know, the previous Marvel releases, you know, for the kid-based toy lines. Those actually looked pretty darn good. These didn't even come close, and they were $6 more than those figures. So I'm going to hopefully assume that those figures were a one-off and going forward, these figures will get a lot better. My first test of this is the Marvel Legends X-Men, the animated series version of Wolverine. The X-Men animated series along with Batman, the animated series were my two favorite shows in the 90s. It's wonderful theme music, intro, serialized storytelling, and those amazing Jim Lee looks for the characters are seared into my brain. That's why the majority of the Marvel Legends that I pick up today are the ones that look like the characters from that show. But very few of these figures have been an exact recreation of their 90s animated look. So this is where Hasbro's plastic-free packaging and the 90s animated look for Marvel Legends intersect. I gotta say it's a more clever approach to kind of leverage the VHS box to contain these figures. Before we had every show ever available to stream at our fingertips as kids, if it wasn't airing live on TV, you had to have a VHS copy of your favorite shows. So as a plastic free packaging concept, I like the approach they've taken here, even though I think I would have liked to see a little bit more images of the actual figure. You could have done it, you know, where the little Wolverine head is in the top left hand corner uh, or just something to make it seem like this is a action figure inside of this box. I do really like the artwork. I just, you know, if I'm looking straight at it, I wouldn't know that there was an action figure inside. You do get an image of the figure on the back of the box, and then you also get a cool VHS style version of the Marvel Legends logo on the sides of the VHS quote unquote box. The box is a lot bigger than, you know, a normal VHS box. I also think it would've been really cool to have like a cardboard tape inside of this box that you could pull out and see the figure inside. You know, one of the big critiques we have of this style packaging so far is not being able to check the paint on the figure. I'm hoping that they're going to improve this. If you look at those leaked images of the selfie series from Hasbro, it looks like an outer sleeve where you kind of pull out the figure and then you actually see the figure inside of the packaging. And I think it would have been really cool if this was like a VHS tape inside of the box, you could pull it out and then you could see the figure inside. This is maybe something they can do on future releases for these animated X-Men figures, but I do wish we had something like that with this figure. Instead, when we open up the box, we have a pretty boring cardboard insert. We have the actual Wolverine figure wrapped in a, you know, Cracker Jack bag that you get at a ball game in 1922. Uh, and then we also get the accessories, the extra head, the iconic picture of Scott and Jean Grey, as well as two unclawed hands. Taking the Wolverine out of his sandwich bag, there are immediately things I really like about this figure and some that I don't like. For starters, there is nothing to worry here about a huge drop off in quality like we saw with those Thor 11 Thunder figures. Everything that you would expect from a Marvel Legends figure you can see here. My only critiques actually have to do with the approach that they took with the paint on this figure. I'll start with the things that I like. I really love the sculpting on this figure, especially in the head sculpt. His masked head looks way better than the most recent kind of yellow and blue suit version of Wolverine that we have gotten in Marvel Legends. It looks like it jumped right off screen. It has the big horns and it just looks really, really good. The colors also really pop. It's a lot more bright and vibrant compared to the, again, most recent release of this look for the figure. 
I also absolutely love that we got the framed picture of Scott Summers and Jean Grey. It is, you know, one of the most popular and iconic memes of all time. And I love that they included it here. I know Mondo made like a specific set for this, but this comes in a lot cheaper and you're able to kind of recreate the scene for, you know, your own toy show. I will say that there's another missed opportunity with this packaging. Now, as you can see here, I used the cardboard insert to kind of replicate his bed for this shot. But I think it'd been really cool if the cardboard insert was, you know, decoed like the bed that he's laying on for that meme. I think this could have like set this plastic free packaging to another level that would have won over a lot of the people that are frustrated with the plastic free packaging. Moving on to some of the things that frustrate me about this figure. The first is the kind of cell shade approach. You know, it's something that I don't really like in general. I don't like it on the NECA Toon Turtle line. And I even more so don't like it on this figure, partially because I think it's a really fantastic look for Wolverine. And I think it's hampered by the kind of cell shading that they've added to it. And that's mainly because they've kind of just done it from one angle, right? They've added the shadows to look like if you're looking at the character from, you know, one position from your camera, it's, it's kind of giving you a shadow from that position which is great if you're setting it up to kind of take advantage of the way the shadows are casted on this figure. But if you want to position it any other way, it, it breaks and it just looks off. I prefer them not to do this at all, but if you are, I think you should have gone for a more neutral approach to the shading. So that way, you know, you could set it up in different poses without it looking off the way this Wolverine figure does. My other problem here is price, and this is true of just about every release from Hasbro this year. I understand that inflation is affecting the entire world at the moment, but the fairly extreme jump in price on this figure outpaces every other major toy retailer at the moment. I think this could be attributed to new CEO of Hasbro, Chris Cox, who had a lot of success on the Wizards of the Coast team with Magic the Gathering, Dungeons and Dragons, whose releases have a way higher profit margin compared to action figures. So his angle to bring that level of profit to all of the brands that Hasbro has can be felt throughout all of the action figures that Hasbro is releasing. I want to thank Chris Esposito, one of our Patreon members for this insight. Now I don't have an MBA, but I gotta say, if you have to jack up the price on your releases to increase profits for your company, I don't know if that's a long-term viable plan to have success for your company. So overall, I am glad that I got this figure. I think it will replace my yellow and blue Wolverine in my Sentinel display. But I think there are a lot of ways they can improve these releases in the future with cooler packaging, as well as just really dialing back the cell shading. But I gotta say, I don't know how many of these figures I'm going to buy at $30 a pop after taxes, or if you have to ship these, probably even more than that. Not when their biggest toy making competitor Mattel is selling similarly scaled figures at $10 less than that. Feel free to disagree with me in the comments. We are clearly experiencing a period of transition for Hasbro with their action figure releases. They still have a ways to go to really nail the plastic free packaging approach, but I do believe they can get there. But I don't know if I can say the same for the spike in price. I wanna thank the people that make this show possible. My patrons, you can find a full list of them right here. If you'd like to help this channel grow, become a patron at patreon.com slash geekdadlife. Definitely check out some of my other videos like this one that YouTube wants you to check out and one of my more recent videos. And until next time, hasta luego and goodbye.